Thanks for tuning in to The Ordinary Filmmaker. In fact, if you're still watching right now after that thumbnail, well, sit back and relax. This is not a video filled with a ton of news. In fact, I'm going to be covering topics that we've already talked about previously and just giving you an update. And the first of that being on the Canon EOS R3. We don't know any more information about it. But what I can tell you is that that is the focus for Canon right now. Anything else is kind of taking a back seat. And I want to bring up uh, something I found on Canon Rumors. And what Canon Rumors has said is, remember that RP replacement camera that was supposed to be coming out last year? Well, it was obviously deferred until this year because of, well, supply chain issues. And we've quite, well, we realized pretty soon, pretty quickly that these issues are not directly related to COVID, although COVID helped start this. It's when everybody started working from home or staying home, their purchases changed. Instead of people traveling, people started building decks. They started um, doing home improvement. They started purchasing things like cameras and whatnot. And so people shifted their purchases. And because everyone's working on just-in-time inventory, it was very difficult for the entire industry or multiple industries to deal with that change. And we're still feeling it today. I bought some lumber to fix my deck and I'm paying three times the price that I would have just a year and a half ago. And that's pretty significant. I pity anybody that's building a house or doing anything with wood these days. But the same goes for microchips. There's a huge uh, supply constraint right now, and that's not gonna change for two years, and regardless of what happens with COVID. So that being said, the R3 is Canon's focus. They wanna get this out the door. They wanna try to make as much money off these higher end bodies as they can. They're still focused, of course, on making more R5s and other cameras that are in demand. But the EOS RP is coming, and it's supposed to be coming this year, but Canon's focus is gonna be on the R3, and once they've gotten the R3 taken care of and they've got enough of them moving out the door, the focus is going to be on the RP. Now, no dates are given here, but I would suspect that if we're gonna see it, it's gonna to be towards the fourth quarter or even into Q1 of next year, which is too bad. We desperately need a really good, solid, entry-level full-frame mirrorless camera. And my hope for this camera is, like the R5 and the R6, we won't have cropped video. Hopefully we'll have 4K 30 without any issues, as well as 24 frames per second. And it'd be nice to have Canon Log in there as well, but we'll have to wait and see. I'd be surprised if they do give us Canon Log. Well, they gave it... See, here's the thing. With the EOS R, we got Canon Log 1. But you see, Canon will give you one thing in one model and take it away in another. And if you look at the EOS R and some of the features we got in the R6, they took away some of the features that EOS R had in the R6. Um, it just... It, it's baffling. So what else are we supposed to be seeing come out this year? Well, that APS-C camera that we've talked about for about two years now, well, that is supposed to be coming out in the second half, but again, we don't have any dates. The focus is gonna be on the R3 and of course, other cameras like the R5. But I'm really excited by these possibilities. I really do hope we get to see the Canon EOS R3 soon. Uh, Canon set up a microsite and they keep updating it. So this thing I feel is pretty imminent. And the date to watch for is the Tokyo Olympics, which is supposed to happen in late July. I pause there because, well, there's been an awful lot of news saying that the Japanese people, specifically those living in Tokyo, aren't very happy with the Olympics going forward and they don't want to see it happen. I feel for them. But at this point, it looks like the Olympics are going to go ahead and I and I'd expect Canon to do a full announcement, release, make it available for sale, within the first week of July, or maybe, what is it now, the 12th of June? Actually, I'd expect something pretty soon because you wanna get those out there, you wanna get it in the hands of people. This is the camera that Canon wants to showcase at the Olympics. It is their, it is gonna be their most capable fast action sports camera out there. But for me, I, the R3 doesn't really interest me. I'm actually more interested in the RP. I'm more interested in those consumer level hobbyist cameras. Yes, I'm using the R5 and it's a huge jump for me, but in all honesty, that was because there was really nothing else out there that Canon delivered that gave me really good video and also really good photos. And I didn't want to wait another few more years. I've been dying for a new camera for many, many years. My Canon 70D is what? Seven years old when I got the R5. So I really do hope we see the RP soon. And I hope we see a camera that fits in just between the RP and the R6, and I think for most people, it's gonna be a terrific camera. 
I still look at the Canon 90D and I think that is probably one of the best values out there. Same with the Rebel T8i. But the 90D is kind of a personal favorite of mine. I just wish the M6 hadn't a compromise a bit more because I know the M6 Mark II is a good camera, but to me, because it's using the EFM system, it has no interest to me. At least the Canon 90D, you're using the EF and the EFS mount, and both of those can be migrated to the R system for very little cost. So that's why I'm not interested in the EFM system at all. There's no upgradability, there's no portability, unless, of course, you're buying the adapter and you're just using EF and EFS lenses. And yes, you do need an adapter for the R system, but it's only $90 or $100. So there's that. All right, so that's really it for news. Well, actually, no, there is one more thing that um, I saw. Uh, there's an auction for a 1200 millimeter EF lens, and it's supposed to be getting up to around 150,000 US dollars. Look, you know me, you know I love these types of super telephoto lenses. I just took out the 800 millimeter the other day, and I got some great shots of some birds, of um, a muskrat up close. And I got some other shots. I took it out the other day and I was shooting some geese and I got some of these shots and I just, I'm not a professional photographer. I'm, I'm all about video, but I look at some of these shots and I'm just enamored by how it's able to capture that moment in time of that young goose as it's growing up. I know I sound like a proud parent, don't I? But no, these aren't my pets. These are wild animals. And I had a lot of fun with the 800 millimeter. I love super telephotos. And as soon as probably September arrives, I'm going to be out there hunting Jupiter and Saturn again. Now they are rising off the horizon around midnight, 1130 Eastern Daylight Time. But it takes so long to get dark here. The sun doesn't set till about 905, but it doesn't get truly dark until almost midnight. And then, of course, you've got heat pollution. So if there's any humidity in the air, unless you're shooting straight up, you're not going to get any great shots. So I'm going to wait till probably September rolls around, September, maybe late August, and then drive about 15, 20 minutes north where there won't be a lot of light pollution. I'm going to take the 800 millimeter along with a two times extender, and I'm going to get some amazing shots. I'm going to get some amazing videos. So I'm really excited by Super Telephotos, but $150,000? <sighs> That's too much for me. It makes me wonder what the RF version is going to cost. I'm sure it'll be a damn sight cheaper than that, but still. You know, do I get that or a Corvette? And no, I'm not kidding. I am seriously planning on getting a Corvette. When we bought this wonderful house here a few years ago, I didn't want to do it. I thought we were perfectly happy in our paid off house, uh, uh, end unit townhouse. And I said to my wife, I said, okay, if we get this, then I get a Corvette. She says, yes. And she didn't mention whether it was used or new. So I'm hunting now new. They're pretty expensive. They're around 90,000 for the trim package that I'm looking at in Canadian dollars, because that's what I pay with. Uh, or there's used, and I could go with the C6, which is what I had. I had an 08 C6, and I like that car, but I'm not rushing into this. To me, this is an awful lot of money for something that's, as my wife puts it, a waste of money. But how many more summers do I have left? Five, 10, 15? I don't know. I like, what I liked about that car is it got me out. It got me taking photos. I thought, well, what do I want to shoot today? Do I want to go to the East Coast? Do I want to go down to New York? And so... That Canon 50D and the Corvette, I took a lot of great shots. I got some great shots of Mount Washington, New Hampshire, the East Coast, uh, Cape Elizabeth, um, and I really, really enjoyed that. It was an awful lot of fun. So I do hope, I do hope, I will just have to wait and see, because right now the price of used cars, now I sell my C6 almost 10 years ago, and right now to buy that car, cost as much as when I sold it 10 years ago because there's dealerships are having trouble getting cars and what they're trying to do is get used cars and they're paying a premium. I had Toyota call me up just a couple of weeks ago and they said, look, uh, we want to buy your car and we'll offer you a premium. My only thing was is, well, we only have one car. So if we sell you this, then we got to buy another car and pay a premium on that. So the Corvette's going to have to wait. But um, yeah, it's... Um, it's really interesting. And in talking about the delays and the microchips, it, it is affecting everything. And one of the things that first happened is once we all got pretty well sent home, people started buying on Amazon. So what would normally happen is you'd get your shipping from Asia or Europe or wherever, and it would come to the ports. Well, because the, the, the products changed and the market wasn't ready for it, 
instead of having maybe two container ships waiting to be offloaded, you had a you had a buffer of like six or eight or 12 of these container ships waiting in the harbor, waiting to be offloaded. So things were taking a lot longer and prices were being driven up. I just got my Toyota fixed. The rear hatch wasn't working properly. It took two months to get the parts. Stove, well, we've got another issue. The touch panel isn't working. I'm told it could take up to three months. So bear that in mind when it comes to cameras, it is gonna take you a bit of time to get these cameras. If you're 100% sure you want something, then as soon as it's available, or even before it's available, call up your favorite camera shop. And this is what I love dealing with local cameras like camera stores like Patrick at Downtown Camera, because as soon as the there was a hint of an RF 100 millimeter, I called him, I said, you know what, just, I don't care when it comes out, I don't care what they're gonna call it, reserve a copy, put me first in line. And so he has, and then as soon as it was announced, he confirmed, he says, yes, you're first in line, because, that's the only way you're gonna get things right away. Otherwise, you can wait, look at the R5. Some people waited three, four months before they got the R5. And I, I don't really see this changing anytime soon. The whole just-in-time inventory approach didn't work. What companies should have learned from Toyota, which is where they got this from, is they should have, yes, planned for just-in-time inventory, but for those critical items that you could only source from one place, and a disruption for whatever reason could cause problems, well, those maybe you should stockpile for six months or more. And very few companies did that. And so now we're seeing this issue that's affecting every industry, including lumber, which, you know, grows on trees. And we've got plenty of timber in this country, but still, um, a six by six, 12 foot, cost me $82. And that's a lot, it's three times the price of a few years ago. Crazy. Now, one last thing I want to talk to you guys about before I close off this video, which has been a bit of a rambling session, hence why I put, don't watch this video as the thumbnail. So I wouldn't get too many people complaining about why are you rambling on like, um, who is that guy? Um, Rossman, Lewis Rossman. He does the thing about the repairs. He, you learn a lot, but boy, it's, it takes him a while to get to his point. And it's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm not in a rush. And the reason for this is, you know what? there hasn't been a lot of news. In fact, there's been almost nothing. And when I saw this on Canon Rumors yesterday talking about the delays and what we should expect this year, I just thought, this is not news. This is just regurgitation of something I put out several months ago, which was, again, a regurgitation of something I put out before, just changing the date. So I, I just don't see the need of rushing that out the door. And I thought, you know, I feel pretty good today. I got up at five o'clock. I was exhausted yesterday. I did something called a was it an R5 or an F5 workout? Uh, completely exhausted me yesterday. So I went to bed around eight o'clock. So I woke up at five, went for a walk, realized the lockdown is over here. So I needed some lumber. I went to Home Depot and got some lumber. And uh, then I took my son, we went out for breakfast. Amazing, sitting down at a restaurant eating for what seems like an eternity. Doesn't feel like we're back to normal in any way whatsoever. You're still wearing masks, you're still distancing to be able to sit down at a table, have somebody bring you some food. And it was just almost magical. It, it, it felt good. So, you know, today was one of those days where I feel like um, a slightly greater sense of normalcy. Um, I was relaxing on the deck here and I thought, you know, why can't I just throw together a movie? Why don't I put out a video, let, a chance to talk to you guys, let you know I'm still here, I'm still producing, but I'm not gonna chase every single news story. I want to have more of my life back and I put basically on this channel, it was a full-time job on top of my full-time job, leaving me very little time. So I'm changing that approach, but I'm okay. I'm still here and thank you, Moving Matt and many others asking, is everything okay? And it is. In fact, this is a sign that things are better than okay. I'm giving myself more time and more time for my family and I hope you can also get out and enjoy the weather, go for walks. I know it's still stressful. I know there are many challenges out there and I know you're worried. There's financial worries, there's um, health concerns. All I can say is just try to focus on what's important in your life, your friends, your family. Um, and you're obviously watching this channel because you love camera gear. Get out there, take your camera and go and shoot. Uh, when I took the 800 millimeter out last night, I actually put it onto the tripod, tilted the tripod, locked it, strung it over my shoulder, and walked about a kilometer and a half to where I took the photos. 
it wasn't all that uncomfortable, but it wasn't, you know, you know, it's 20 plus pounds plus the camera, but still it was, it was a chance for me to kind of detach away from everything. And I took a few shots. I tried a few things and I was actually pretty happy with the, with the results. And I came back and I edited it and I only kept about three of the photos because I really only was capturing three different subjects instead of shooting, you know, how sometimes you'll shoot 30 sub 30 pictures of one subject and then you go back and look and pick the best one. That's what I do. I'm not going to keep all 30. It's just silly. I am now shooting in raw. Um, I'm not doing heath anymore. I'm just going to shoot in raw all the time. It does really give you a lot more benefits in post. And what I do is once I bring it into Pixelmator, I do my adjustments and then I export it and I take it into photos and you know, I can trim the size down a little bit because <laughs> shooting in raw at 45 megapixels, it's right around 60 megabytes. And that's absolutely huge. Now, when I finish editing them and I convert them to JPEG, they're still between around 10 and 15 megabytes. But that was, that's my way of sort of um, relaxing, addressing my mental health, getting out there and not focusing on the news. And again, here today, shooting this video, same sort of thing. There, I don't need to throw up a lot of graphics here. I don't need to do a lot of editing. I bring it in, I color balance it, I check the beginning and the end. I didn't make a lot of mistakes. So guess what? I don't have to watch the whole thing. I can then just let it render, export it, and this is my little gift to you. Uh, happy Father's Day if I don't have a video coming up by Father's Day. The way things are going with news right now, May was a complete whitewash, or not whitewash, with a complete wash, there was really nothing coming out. And I almost didn't even put this video out. So hopefully we'll get some great news. But that's it for now. One last thing before I do let you go, though, a lot of you keep asking me what I'm shooting. I'm shooting right now in 4K high quality mode or 4K HQ, 30 frames per second, Canon Log 3, and I'm using the Ninja 5 as well. Now the camera's partly in the sun, but I don't expect it to overheat. And I'm right at around 17 minutes of recording. So again, that's what I love about using the Ninja. And thank you for Ninja for supporting the channel and giving me this device. Because um, yeah, the, if you have an R5 and you have overheats or the R6, the Ninja 5 is a great way to sort of work around that. Or get a Sony a7S III. But that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. Don't forget to subscribe for your chance to win two Angelbird 128GB AV Pro MK2 V90 SD cards, as well as a bunch of Ulanzi LED lights. But more importantly, have yourself a great weekend and I uh, hope you have a good week. Summer's here in most of the world. Hopefully you have good weather. Here it's dry and hot. It's 95 degrees just the other day. Anyhow, that's it for now. Thanks for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. We'll see you again soon.